through. But your lack of familiarization of your rights and, and the abilities of the new nature will still make you significantly ineffective. Not because you should be ineffective, but simply because it's Uzziah, amen, 4, 6. My people are dying for lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge will make you very, very ineffective still in Jesus' name. Amen? Perfect. Say, it's not enough for me to have a new nature. It's not enough for me to have a new nature. Why is that is a good thing? Why is that is a good thing? Or an excellent thing? Or an excellent thing? That does not guarantee. That does not guarantee. It shall be. It shall be an effective thing. An effective thing. Amen. You still have to understand how to navigate in it, how to apply it. Perfect. Amen. You still have to deal every day with people, things, and situation. Every day, you are in different situations, different circumstances, different people, and different forces. The new nature has to be effective. We see this in the book of Luke 9. The disciples, they were passing through Samaria. They already had the new nature. And they knew they had a fair good handle on certain aspects of it. And the people in Samaria, because they heard Christ was going through to Jerusalem, they said, you know, they didn't want him there. And, and they were all upset and, and, and not treating him very nice. And the disciples turned and go, should we call them fire like Elijah and destroy the city? And Christ rebuked them and censored them. He said, you do not know the new nature, the kind of spirit you have. The Son of Man did not come to destroy man, but to save man life. So it shows you, do they have the new nature and they understand the power component, they did not understand the compassion and the love and the mercy. Welcome, my sister. Amen. So it's important for the Holy Spirit to keep familiarizing you and acquainting you, acquainting you with the nature, amen, of the new nature. In the name of Jesus. If not, you'll keep, you know, I don't know. When I, when I was a kid, I remember sometimes I had various friends or even brothers and sisters. And sometimes, let's say they have a very, very um, gentle nature. And you are trying to push them into a direction that you would like them, that call them to have a very hard or a harsh or a very, you know, insensitive nature. And they do not su you know, succeed very well in that area. They do not even operate or, or be very effective in that area. Because you're trying to push them into an area that the nature does not amen, work very well in. The it does not complement their nature. It makes them very, very ineffective in that arena. Make sense? It's like someone that do not have a, a desire or a heart for maths. But you're pushing them into some kind of career that deals heavily with maths. And the child experienced tremendous disappointment and frustration in effectiveness because where you're pushing them, they do not have a desire and, a, and that kind of mind for this kind of technology or system. Does that make sense? Amen. You must be familiar with the nature. And this, this is one of the number one things the Holy Spirit is going to help to trans, uh, um, transition you into in Perfect. Jesus' name. All truth, as I said. Think of the truth in a couple of components. One of the number one truth the Holy Spirit is going to help you to get familiar with is knowing God. Knowing, amen, where you are or what has happened to you now, the new nature. And knowing how to, how to get your mind in an effective state, meaning collaborated, corresponded, you know, with the new nature, with God, purpose, thoughts, plan, fully in alignment with John 6, 38 to 40. You understand that you're not here to do your will. You can't suffer loss. The reason you're suffering loss is because you're not familiar with how to live by faith in Christ. Amen. How to make sure everything that he has placed your hands to be stored over has life. Meaning it has the truth. Amen. And very effective. And it's ready for the day of inspection, for establishing on the last day. In Jesus' name. Hmm. Christ gave a parable. He said a man went away and he leaves his house and his servant. One of them said, oh, the master is away. Let's have fun and he eat and he drink. The other one took care of all the things he ought. So when the master come back, surprise him. You understand? He beat the one that one didn't have things ready for inspection. But the ones that did, he honored him. The master put him to sit down and take care of him. You have to make sure you're not suffering loss left, right, and center in your life. Especially as a church. I'm talking those who have the new nature. We're supposed to live by the principle of the new nature. And the familiarization and the acquaintedness with the new nature. And who has the help of the Holy Spirit. This is why the Bible says judgment begins in the church. Judgment has to begin in the church because the church has a new nature. Perfect. One without yeast or leaven. Perfect. Amen. The church, the Holy Spirit is helping relentlessly to get familiar and acquainted with the new nature. Perfect. Does this make sense? Amen. Thank 
The church is expected not to suffer loss. Hmm. The church is expected that everything that the Lord has placed into his hands, amen, to have life and ready for establishing. Does this make sense? Hmm. Hallelujah. In the name. Now let, let me give, I like a little bit to establish it. Jesus said, who likes a lamp but put it under a bed or a bushel? So he said, everything that has life should be ready to be what? Established. Meaning put into a place where others can what? See it. When you're ready to establish a, you know, it's a company, you might have a company. And when you put it on the stock exchange, it's when it's ready to be what? Establish. When, when, when you have a daughter or a son, when they meet at a certain age and they, they, they grow up and they went to school, you know, and, and they can work, etc., then you get their marriage and you establish their life. A woman raises her child, give her education, and at a certain time she married her, it established her. It's well, so God is always good. Is this thing operating at a sufficient level of life that it can be what? Established. Perfect. Amen? So the Lord is preparing us to be established. The Lord is preparing us to be established. Okay, he said, you do not put life in something and put it where? Under a bush. He said, I do not put life in something and put it under a bed. It ain't going to happen. But he said, I place it on a window or a windowsill where everybody can what? See it. So judgment has to begin with those that have the new nature. Amen? Perfect. Those that are being renewed according to Ephesians 4. Amen? In the new nature. Those that are moving away. And those who have the help of the Holy Spirit. Judgment has to begin here. Especially the judgment of effectiveness. And this judgment I'm talking about, it will be the judgment of, you see, of the master that went away and left the servant. Okay. The, the judgment on the world is different. The judgment on the world is why did you reject Christ? Why did you accept salvation? Okay. The judgment of the church is not salvation. The church is saved. The church can never get more saved. It's saved as it can be. <laughs> the judgment on the church is effectiveness. Perfect. Why did I give you life? Okay. Is the things in you and around you ready for establishing? Or, or do I have to still keep it? You see, when, when if someone is, being rec is recovering and they're too sick, you understand, and somebody comes to visit them, you can't bring them out because they're so sick. They, they cannot be established. They can't come out to greet the person. God is always trying to fill you with life in your spirit, in your soul, in, in every component of your being and existence that he can what? Present you. Present you. This is the old game all the time. This is what the Holy Spirit, this is the work the Holy Spirit is doing relentlessly with you. This is the kingdom work. He's going, I need you to be very familiar with righteousness. I need you to be very familiar with how to live in peace with God and man. I need you to be very familiar with how to live in the, in the joy of the Lord so you're strong. You see, I need you to be very familiar how to stay in and abide in the Holy Spirit that you produce. Perfect. This is the work. Amen? You need to understand where you are and what's going on. Does this make sense? Perfect. This is why last week, I tell you, if you don't go back, um, go on YouTube, go on, go on our website, see the path that we talked about last week. Amen? Pastor Chow and Sister Jess have done an excellent. And take your time through it. You will be evaluated, it, evaluated on it. God will call you. I have give you a new nature. They said, oh, sir, how long you've been saved. Why aren't you familiar? Why aren't you renew at all in it? Renew is simply, is your mind even begin to conceptualize the idea of the new nature? Perfect. Is it familiar at all? And he, and, and he has something to guarantee. The Bible said the Holy Spirit be given to you as a what? A guarantee. Hmm. So he is guarantee your familiarization. <laughs> is it, it is why, is it, in our own Bible, God said, my people are stupid. Literally. That's not my word. That's his word. Literally. Because they don't get familiar. They're not familiar with the new nature. They don't care. They don't even have much of a desire to understand what, it, what it's like. How does it work? Complacent. But here's the challenge. You still got to deal with life. Perfect. Every day you got to deal with people. Every day you got to deal with a, a variety of things, situations, and forces. How are you, is it? How are you going to be effective if you're not familiar with the instrument you're using? Hmm. Say, so I must be familiar. I must, must be, be familiar. familiar. So we are held. We, we are held to effectiveness. To to effectiveness. effectiveness. We are evaluated. We are evaluated on effectiveness. On effectiveness. The Bible says in, in Corinthians, every one of us will be called before the judgment seat of God, Amen, of Christ, Amen. 
to see what we have been doing, what we've been busy with while we were where? In the body. body. Not some, not just those that reject it. All, church and non-church. What have you been busy with? Minimum, you have to go, minimum, I've been busy trying to get familiar. Not necessarily I got to establishment. But minimum, I have to be what? Give it a go. Lord, I've been busy trying to get familiar with the new nature. With the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is minimum expectation. Minimum. Perfect. Hopefully you get familiar enough that you go, Lord, you have granted me grace to get familiar with the new nature, what it is to live by faith in Christ, that I have established it through your spirit and your grace. Does this make sense? In the name of Jesus. So, these are some of, as I said, some of the minimum expectation, amen, as, as, as we get ready to deal with that process. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But now put away and rid yourself completely of all these things. Hmm. Now where are these things? We covered these already in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Huh? Amen? Yeah. In the old is it, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 6 to 8, we cover. This is all leaven. The Bible said, no, notice you. But, but now put away and rid yourself. Amen? The familiarization in your mind after the nature has been. Amen? Dead, crucified. Amen. Completely of all these things, the anger, the rage, the bad feelings towards amen, others, the cursing, the slanders, the foul-mouthed abuse and shameful utterance from your lips. So even though your nature has been, been gone, your mind will still be full of these things. So part of the Holy Spirit job and your commitment is to rid yourself of it. So every time you see it, you're supposed to say, Lord, I have a new nature. Grant me the grace that I rid myself of all the anger, amen, and all the foul mountainness and the rage, everything that you know shouldn't be there. Because remember the kingdom of God, amen, Romans 14, 17, it, it is righteousness, peace and joy, and being in the Holy Spirit. So when you find you're not operating right or in peace or in joy or abiding, you need to pray. You need to ask God, what did Christ say? How did Christ say we, we fix all of this? Ask and what? Keep on asking till it's corrected. Knock and what? Keep on knocking. Seek and what? You're not supposed to stop. Let me teach you a wonderful principle I've learned from the Lord. It's in the Bible. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 11. The Bible says if you put yourself under judgment, then there's no need for God to put you. If you keep dealing with these matters and not just letting them, ah, then there's no need for God to put you. Because you put yourself seeing it's not operating. You must learn this principle. Or if not, the Lord will put you there. You see, you have to look at yourself and go, okay, according to the new nature, I'm supposed to rid myself amen, completely of all this anger and rage and bad. You can't do it, remember, without the help of the Holy Spirit. If I take familiarization, amen, these bad feelings towards all of the cursing, the slandering, the foul mountainness, the abuse, and the shameful utterance from my lips. So meaning, you have to consistently, what I'm trying to say, make this not acceptable to you. Hmm. If this is acceptable to you, then God will bring you under him to go, this is not acceptable to me. <coughs> do, you, do you understand? Part of your new nature and the consciousness of the new nature, then the moral aspect of your nature, this can't, you can't hmm. be comfortable with it. It's not you're not going to do it, but it can't, you can't be comfortable with it. If you are justifying it, I'll show you what's going to happen. Keep your hand. You stay where you are. I'll go quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to show you something. Perfect. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, quickly. Uh, where are we? This is spiritual and moral revelation. Amen. Perfect. Yeah. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17, remember, the whole is gone. The whole spiritual and moral condition is gone. You're supposed to have one now that make these things not acceptable to you. And the Holy Spirit will be right there to tell you, this is not good. Or, or the young people will say, it's not cool. This is not cool. This behavior is not acceptable to you. And I'm not just talking this towards Adam, even towards yourself. Because when you're doing it against yourself, you are throttling the new nature. You're condemning the new nature. So it's against God, you, or anything else. Amen? The Bible said this. In 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, it reads this way. For if we searchingly examine ourselves, detecting our shortcoming, and recognize our own condition. Hmm. So the Bible said, you must search and examine yourself. You must detect your shortcoming. Amen? And recognize the condition that is not in alignment with righteousness, peace, joy, or abiding. Then if you can do this and recognize it, you, you, you see the scripture said, we should not be judged. Amen? And penalty decreed. By the divine judgment. If you want to avoid divine judgment, you have to recognize and deal with it. Perfect. If you don't, divine judgment come. God go, see if you seem to have a problem identifying it, I'm going to do it for you. Because those he loves, what does he do? He tell them their fault. He disciplined them. He chastened them. He said, because I love you, I'm going to show you what I have to get fixed. Okay, you have a wonderful way of overlooking it. Amen? Amen. The Bible said in verse 32, but when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, because when you don't search and you don't examine yourself and you don't recognize it, the Bible says you are fall what? Short. Write that scripture when you go, go back and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 31 and 32. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined and chastened so that we may not finally be condemned. God said, I don't want you to condemn you. So I got to chase you and discipline you. Because you ain't doing it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to work with it. Perfect. So God said, because you are falling short of searching and examining and recognizing. Amen? Perfect. Then the judgment of the Lord, we are disciplined and chastened so that we may not Finally, be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. God said, I don't want to deal with you like the world, so I'm going to deal with you now. Say, I have to search myself. I have, I have to, search to search myself. myself. I have to examine myself. I have to, examine myself. Examine to myself. detect my shortcoming. To detect my shortcoming. I must recognize it. I must recognize it. And with the grace of Jesus, grace deal, of with it. deal with it. To avoid divine judgment. To avoid divine judgment. Because you are in divine grace and blessing. Part of divine grace and blessing is to what? Show you what's wrong. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Part of grace is not just, oh, I just love you, you're wonderful. He said, no, no, because I love you, I'm going to show you your fault. Part of divine grace and blessing is to show you your issues. Amen? Amen. It's to show you your issue. Perfect. So you can deal with them. Show you, you're still, you see, either applying the whole Adamic attitude, which is your mind, when I say attitude, I'm talking about your mind, or you're trying to pick up the whole Adamic nature. One or two. two. Mm. You must search yourself. You must detect the shortcoming. Mm. And you must ask God with the help of Jesus to deal with it. Does that make sense? Amen. Because we have to rid ourselves. Amen. If not, if these things are there, you'll find though you are saved, God can establish you. God will never Amen. establish. Amen? The rage and the anger and the bad feelings towards other people and the, and the cursing and the slandering and the foul mouthed abuse and the shameful mm -hmm. utterance. He will never establish. He wants to keep you hidden there. Perfect. Some of us, God can't show us it because these things come out. Perfect. Because you're going to have situations just like Jesus, they wanted to kill him all the time. They don't like him. Amen? Is this some said, because they don't like you, let's kill them. God goes, no, that's not the solution. That's not why I'm here. What are you going to do? You're going to let your anger go? You're going to let the rage go? The cussing? Can't. So God, gonna, go ahead, never mind. Larry Randolph said, what you don't learn by honor, you learn by pain. Yes. If you don't honor this word, 1 Corinthians 11, 31, I guarantee you, you will learn it by pain. Yes. Because you are ignoring the word of God and the word of God can never change. Perfect. You, that that nature will start to destroy you. Yeah. Everything around yes. you. Yes. And you will feel the pain. Amen. There's a wonderful prophet. His name is Brother Larry Randolph, and he got what you don't want. You see, if you apply 
1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32, it's called you're living by honor. You're trying to do exactly what the Word of God said. I'm trying to honor God. I'm trying to use the Word of, use the light that is within me, use the new nature with the help of the Holy Spirit to search, um, search out my shortcoming and deal with it. This is called to live by honor. I don't, and I'll say it simple. I don't want to bring shame to God, so I'm trying to fix the things that I know are shameful. I'm not saying I can fix it on my own, but I know with the help of God, and I know He's willing, and He wants to help me, and He wants glory and honor for my life, so He will give me the grace to fix it. Perfect. But I'm working to get it done. Mm. This is to live by honor. Mm. If you don't do it this way, then you will learn it by pain. You'll get the divine judgment, the chastening, amen, and the discipline to deal with it. Do you understand this? Mm. It is better with the help of the Holy Spirit to recognize it and get it out of you. Perfect. Get it dealt with. Mm. Does this make sense? Amen. I pray the Lord give you the revelation and the conviction to deal with those things. Amen. Every one of us have various components we are dealing with. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Every time I feel a little high, God typically does highlight one of these for me. <laughs> you gotta notice you're feeling kind of wonderful, thinking you're the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at those anger? Why don't we take a look at some of these bad feelings towards somebody? Do you understand? Humility quickly become my coat again. The problem with confidence is you might lose your watchfulness. Amen. This is the problem. Yeah. We are confident in the Lord. Perfect. Never forget where your confidence lie. Perfect. Our confidence is in Jesus. Yeah. As our peace and righteousness and wisdom yeah. is in Jesus. Amen. So we have some things to take care of. We have some, some things, things to take care of. And we must. And we must. So we don't end up. So we don't end up. Under divine judgment. Under divine judgment. Along judgment. with the world. Along with the world. We do not belong there. We do not belong there. You are God's beloved. We are God's beloved. Amen. But God doesn't spoil children. <laughs> he doesn't spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen. He doesn't make that mistake. No. He's righteous. He is righteous. He will get you for establishment. I'll say it. Mm. He will get you to present you. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. one of us, God will want to present somewhere. There's a situation he can't wait to display you in. There's a circumstance, a, co a condition, some force that he can't wait to unveil you. But he will not do it until he gets the things that is now worthy of seeing out of you. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. In Jesus' name. You know, it, it, it's like a, say a person is an alcoholic and he won't admit it. He goes out driving one day drunk, he kills someone. Mm. He never drinks up. He yes. had to learn. By pain. By divine discipline. Yes. That's a hard way to Yes. Learn. You see, one way or the other. Your sloppiness will kill you. Yes. So you can, Lord, by honoring the God, I want to honor you. And I know I have the new nature. And I know you're renewing the entirety of my mind with the help of the Holy Spirit. But I'm falling short regular. I still cuss at will. I still get bad fear. This, you know, you, you're recognizing. You're searching. And you're dealing. You're presenting it on the cross before him. Perfect. You understand? This is called living in honor. You see, you're constantly living with a perpetual sense that this is not reflective. And honor, you see, I will not honor God. You have a good sense of this process. This will not make my God, you understand? This is not his righteousness I'm exemplifying. This is not his peace I'm exemplifying. I'm ready to cut out a man here as it will. Mm. This is not his joy that I'm drawing strength from. Mm. I still complain and grumble every minute when there's work to be done. This is not his joy that I'm supposed to find strength in. Mm. Amen? I still forever catch myself out of the Holy Spirit mm. instead of abiding. The one that I can't produce. And you, you, got, you, got, you got to talk. You remember, what are you in? Romans 6, amen? Verse 10 and 11, what are you in? Unbroken okay. fellowship. Meaning, you got to talk to him all the time. Mm. You got to talk to him all the time. All the time, Lord. You are, I know you're watching, but I got to tell you, any of you. see, I just messed that up. You, <laughs> saw the, you saw the murderous thoughts I just had towards that person. <laughs> you saw the murderous thoughts. <laughs> Do you remember talk, Paul had murderous thoughts? Perfect. Do you understand this? You see, if you, this is why God loved David. If you read the Psalms, mm -hmm. David looks like he's schizophrenic. 
<laughs> David is worshiping God and you're great, you're wonderful, you're, you're, you know, you ought to be magnified, you know, you're, you're, you're the most majestic. So, and David may come and tell him, amen, a man in Abel, just, just, just say he's giving nothing to you or your man. David go, what? I want to kill him. I want to kill his children. I want to kill his mother. I want to kill the whole village and all the animals. <laughs> David goes from one extreme one. You know, David, David doesn't pretend. He is wide open. All depends where you catch him that day. All depends. You know, there's a preacher named uh, Mike Murdoch. Mike Murdoch says in every man, there are two people. There's a fool and a king. He said, it all depends on which one you arouse. If you arouse the fool, David, come out. He will destroy everything in sight. And if you arouse the cage, <laughs> amen, Abigail was brilliant. She realized David is in his full state. She said, David, you're a man of greatness. You're a man of excellence. The people will talk about you forever. David go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who is that guy just don't want to kill everybody? Yeah, that's me. Tell me more. The king comes out. The responsible person. All depends on the approach. Do you understand this? Amen. You have, you have the Adamic nature on the cross, which can come off if you let foolishness Perfect. not be dealt with. Amen? But you also have the new nature of God, one that is filled with righteousness, peace, joy, and abiding. It likes to stay in Eden. Amen? Yes. And you have the Adamic nature that does not like to abide. It doesn't like righteousness. It doesn't like peace and joy. It can't live in peace with nobody. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. You gotta know.